One more click here. Let's see. Okay, we're good to go. Thank you, Seth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the February meeting of the NISC Unit Public Works Committee. Kathy Persons, committee clerk, will you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Chairperson McGraw's here. Supervisor Syed. I'm here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Matt Ghetto. I'm here. Is Matt alum? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Brian Packus. I'm here. Good morning. Stan Saminski. I'm here. Uh, Paul Briggs. Good morning. Josh Holly. Good morning. Michelle Martinelli. I'm here. Good morning. Jessica Gerber. Rosemary Jackwith. Bill McPartland. John Delorada. Laura Robertson. I'm here. Diane Percy. Janet Wynn. He's Ray Smith. Yeah. And Pete Rakovica. And Elena Finnan. Here. Okay, did I miss anyone? Okay, thank you all. Wonderful, Kathy. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a full house this morning. I see a lot of people on the call, a lot of names answered yes to being on the roll. I'm going to ask folks to put themselves on mute. There's a, with a lot of people comes a lot of background noise. And I know I'm no one to talk because I'm the queen of background noise. But if people can put themselves on mute unless they're going to talk, that would be great. And um, I'm going to move to the first item, which is the um, approval of the minutes. I have they've been reviewed by everyone and do I will entertain a motion to approve them. Motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Supervisor. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Matt Yetto, award winning Matt Yetto. Can you please? take over that item number two admin and engineering okay uh so just an uh, update on our covid response uh talked to charlie yesterday the uv light systems have been installed at the water and sewer garage and the plants so um the disinfection that our, we wanted to provide to the, to the to the staff is now working um very happy for that uh thank you very much to charlie for getting that done for us uh, we also, um, all but three of the, the staff members that have requested uh, vaccinations have already had their first shot. Uh, the three that haven't had their first shot are scheduled for next week. So that's great too. Thank you for everybody who worked on that. Thank you, Denise. Um, thanks to the county and, and I'm very thankful that we can get our, our essential workers uh, vaccinated because if they go, if we lose them, then our operations grind to a halt. So. My thank pleasure, you very much. Matt. There, there's nothing more important. They're they're providing our water, so thank you, and thank you for organ helping organize it. Uh, item number three, attorneys' items. Paul. Good morning, everyone. Uh, no update on the Whitmire Drive. There's okay, so when we spoke last time about this, we were going to start put some sort of, I don't want to say deadline because that sounds negative, but we were going to put a timeline to this because it's been on the agenda for years now. Yes, and I um, was out of the office for a little bit, and so I got sure. behind. So that's on my agenda to do. That's okay. I just, I know for the viewers yeah. at home, you know, just that these things are continuing to progress. Pierce Road is moving forward. I'm, I'm in the process of scheduling meetings with the residents to sign the petition. Um, city Water, we're meeting with the city on uh, January 12th at 11, 11 a.m. to have a discussion. Ingersoll Ramp, Ingersoll Ramp. 
Go is ahead. that um, Paul is going to send you the information about that meeting, isn't it? If you okay, can. got it. Okay, Great. thank you. Yes, thank I've, you. I've been asking about it. You have I've been asking, been and I saw the mayor the other day, and he asked me, and then uh, obviously, um, since you know both organizations better than anybody in town. I mean, you're just critical to the whole thing, so. And Ismat, I'll bring you up to date on where we are on that before the meeting. Okay, sounds good, Bob, thank you. Ingersoll home, Josh, any update on that? Hey, Paul, I do have an update on that one. Uh, the one of the board members from Ingersoll reached out to me and told me that they've purchased all the equipment and everything, all the materials necessary for it. They're just waiting for a break in the weather to begin the work. Yeah, that, that was my understanding as well. Good. Thank you both. And I, it, that's obviously a very important project. And thank you for um, working with them. And it's an expense to Ingersoll, so we appreciate them getting it done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Town code update. That's a new one for me. Okay, so uh, part of our our most current um, permit at our wastewater treatment plant, the town's required to create a minim mercury minimization program. Um, right now, uh, it, we have to come with uh, a plan that shows our our policies and our procedures uh, to minimize mercury coming in to the uh, the uh, waste stream from our users. Uh, it's partially um, voluntary right now because uh, I'm going to be sending out a request to uh, industrial users, um, school, the school system, medical offices and dental offices, um, asking them to provide to us, there's a checklist of, of uh, best management practices for mercury reduction. You know, do you use, um, chemicals containing mercury, do you um, have, have you replaced all of your, your um, thermometers that use mercury, things like that. So they, they provide that to us, documentation, we can keep that and we can um, keep ahead of that because if we don't keep our mercury to a certain level, ultimately the state's going to require us to modify our permit. And so it's, this is the first step to try to reduce that. Um, and part of that, I was researching other, other municipalities uh, the state's very vague on what they want in the plan, but some of the other municipalities, I, their town code is a lot more restrictive on what you can dis discharge into the sewers. Ours, basically the only d thing I can find in our code that says you shouldn't be putting um, basically sump pumps and underground drains into the sanitary sewers. It doesn't ha list any limits on mercury or the chemicals and things like that. So I'd like to update our town code to be more restrictive um, because our plant's designed for municipal waste. It's not designed to treat chemicals. So if it comes in one end, it's going to come out the other end. Um, and that's, it's just, I mean, it's pretty standard to have that language. I, I looked at the town of colonies and they have a pretty good section. I'd like to try to model off of that. Do we test for those type of heavy metals in our sewage? Part of our mercury plant mer minimization plan says quarterly we, ha uh, we have to do sampling. And is it a big issue still? Is there a lot of mercury still out there? I mean, obviously. There is. Yeah. The threshold's so low for what you're what allowed in. Sure. So it even, the state, you know, our permit even says, we know you you can't meet what the recommended recommended levels are. And pretty much nobody can because it's in the air. It gets, but what happens is it gets condensed through the food chain and then into the sanitary sewer. And then, uh, I mean, one drop of mercury of a broken thermometer can really, the levels are, are that high. It's, 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 it's um, you, can, you can find it in the, in the wastewater. So it's just a matter of uh, a lot of this stuff, people, they don't do anymore. And de dental offices used to be the main concern because when they drill out a, a filling, which is in your head, which is okay, but once it gets in the, <laughs> the thinking, I, you know, so. But anyway, um, we're moving towards that. So I just want to look at um, possible code changes. There are some other code changes, water and sewer related, which have been needed for years. So I don't know if do we want to roll that all together, Paul? We, we, we do. 
We might as well do an overhaul. Yeah, of that. that's the way I feel. If you have them ready to roll or at least ready to be reviewed by Paul, if Elena wants to take a look, that would be great. Um, okay. I, I know that Laura is trying to do some things, so. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have sections of town code that I wanted to update related yeah. to stormwater as well. Um, I've been biding my time. I know that there, our MS4 permit is pending an update from the state. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to have that first so we can make sure whatever changes we make to our code related to stormwater kind of blend well with the new permit. But um, but I just want to you know, say, reiterate that I'm trying to update some of that okay. code too at some point in the near future. When is your MS4 report due, Josh? Well, this this is the report. The report's due in June, and the uh, reporting period ends in, on March seventh. But um, but this is the DEC general permit that authorizes that that give, that has the authority to to impose on us to to do that report. That um, general permit has been expired for a few years now, pending an, an update. So that's what we're waiting for from DEC to update their general permit. Oh. Okay. So Matt, Matt, Josh, and I will have a meeting, and we'll go through the code and work on doing an update of the entire water and sewer code. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Laura, I just say pop off. Laura, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. So I know we try to do this. We try to lump it together, right? We try, you know, not do them as one offs because updating the code is just, you know, tedious for you. Um, Sorry, what, what, <laughs> what would you like to do in terms of a timeline? Because we, we've got other things that are hanging out there. So, yeah, those types of codes. I think that um, yeah, I have a couple things that I do want to do, yeah. and I love working with Matt and um, Joshua. We can pull together any of those things that don't need to go through the planning board because the time, the kind of code changes that he's talking about don't need to go through the planning board. Um, so we can do all of those relatively simply through the town board. I still have a couple that also are zoning code updates, which need right. seeker and going yeah. through the planning board, which yeah. you do need to get started. But um, I think that like we can do all of them together and just make sure that we're on the same page with all of them. Yeah, I just know that you like, if we're going to do updates to the code, to update I the do code. Like right? to do those. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, I, I do. When you talk, Laura, I'm paying attention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so everybody just be mindful of Laura through this process is all I'm asking. Oh, thank you. All right, I'm sorry, Paul, I cut you off. No, I'm done. Thank you, excellent. Does anybody have questions for the town attorney? Okay, moving right along. Item number four, water and sewer maintenance. Okay, so it's the time of year when we, we submit to DEC our annual I&I &I reduction um, report. The majority of what was pr proposed for this last year, um, the reporting year that ended it at the end of last year, um, wasn't done uh, because of COVID. Um, a lot of the work that we had proposed to, that we would do was um, some pressure testing and sealing of a, of a couple lines down along River Road. Um, I Before we even were unable to do it, uh, I contacted DEC and said, here's what's going on. The company we wanted to come in to help with that work is located in Florida. And during the travel ban, um, they couldn't come in and do the work. So sure. I, I, I spoke to Jamie Malcolm. I sent him an email um, and he spoke to his his boss and everyone was, was perfectly fine with us um, pushing what we had proposed to do last year to this year. It was even documented in our annual inspection at our sewer plant. So I don't. It's going to be a pretty pretty short report, just documenting that we did do some some manhole repair, um, which we'll take credit for some some other um, I and I reduction activities. But the uh, the la and this may be the last year that we have to report to DEC for the I and I report. Um, this is a, one of the last things left over from our old consent order. Uh, so um, next this year was to be our last year. So as long as we do what we wanted to do last year and this year was supposed to be just clean up. We'll get that submitted to DEC and that should lift um, everything on the last requirement on that consent order. Uh, the plant's operating very well. The flows are down at the plant, so there's no um, reason for them to extend it. I don't believe we've, we've done what they've asked. Okay. Uh, number four, uh, five, um, wastewater treatment plant. Um, 
I didn't I didn't include something on here because it, it sort of came to light at the last minute. We the town was awarded the um, NIWIA uh, Sustainability Award, uh, which is um, the New York State Water Environmental Association. It's a statewide um, organization. Um, the everything that we've done at the wastewater plant as far as energy um, savings and also the the, the um, high strength waste, all of that um, has won us the award. So it's something something else to to, to use as um, proof that we made the right decision and, and made those changes to the plant. Um, the uh, the award's going to be presented to the town on. Unfortunately, it's in New York. It was going to be in New York City, but because of COVID, now it's going to be virtual, as as everything else is. So on the seventeenth of February, um, we'll receive the award. A plaque should be coming in the mail. Well, congratulations, Matt. I mean, it's really well deserved. I think it's a town effort. Um, and thank you to everybody who who's who's had part of, to do with this. Um, the support of the board, the um, the assistance from ESG, and also. Martin LeJudis and everyone else in the engineering, water and sewer, everyone who's done all, all work on this. So thank you to everybody. Um, I, I'm just I'm glad to see that it's being acknowledged, the, the, all the effort we put into it. Uh, let's see. Um, a high strength waste program update. Um, I, I understand that ESG did submit uh, a, a draft document. Is that correct, Paul? Yes. And uh, unfortunately, Matt, you and I, are, I go to New York City that same time for the dog show. So we could have taken the train down together and <laughs> you can get your award. I could have gone to the dog show, <laughs> which is uh, which also is canceled. But yes, I've reviewed that contract and it's approved. I just have one quick question I've got to talk to ESG about. Other than okay. that, all set to go. OK, can okay. you call them because they're looking to hear from us? I'm going to call him today, but we, um, I, we need a, we're going to need a resolution to ex accept or enter into that contract. Okay. So can you get the information to Elena? I'll do that. Thank you, sir. Um, so the, the second part of that is the DEC approval. Um, our most recent response from DEC did say that they would give us the okay for the, for the Pepsi waste but not for the, the fog or the fats, oil and grease, um, which was always part of our plan. Uh, it was everything, all the documentation we sent to them and initially did say that. So I'm working with um, Karen from BNL to draft a letter to DEC in which we say um, our next, here's our phase in plan. And this is what we expect as far as the types of waste, how much, and um, we agreed to some minor testing to make sure everything was working as as it's not having a negative effect on our plant, but we don't want it to be a long term pilot study, and we 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 don't want to have to wait months and months and months like we did last time for approval um, because we can't start and then stop. We want to start prove that it's working and and continue on. So that we're working on that right now with them. With, uh, with Barton LeJudis, and I, I hope to have a letter by the end of this week. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, our permit allows us to do this, so it's not it's not a permit issue. Um, so, man, when you're yes. ready to send out that letter, I need to make a phone call to the DEC to let them know it's coming. So we need to coordinate that together. I can do that. Great, thank you. So uh, B, sludge disposal options. We had been for the last five years been utilizing uh, Johnstown, Gloversville, wastewater treatment plant to get rid of our dried sludge. I tried everything I could. I contacted, I even went around the, the chief operator to the board uh, that operates the plant. And as of right now, they said no. Um, the good news is our dryer is working very well. Uh, and our, our volume of, of dried sludge is, is down because it, the drying takes away a lot of the volume. Um, so we're contacting the other local uh, landfills to try to find out what the, the, the tipping fee would be. It's gonna be less than 
what we've been paying as far as hauling what the, um, the the wet sludge. Um, so be, between it being uh, a better material and less frequently, I think we shouldn't have too much of a budget issue. We'll, we'll wait and see, and I'll continue to try to push on Johnstown Gloversville to see if they would um, be willing to take it. But uh, I think there's a lot of just the operator out there doesn't want to take it. So, so it, because it's a better material, it, because it's dried, we don't have to just go to Albany, where Albany was the only place that would take the wet sludge. Colony has taken in the in taken it in the past. Uh, Fultonville, uh, the uh, Fulton County landfill also will take it. So we're going to find out exactly the cost breakdown, you know, per ton, and then also the mileage as well. If we can get if we can go to Colony and use it over there at a lower rate, it'd be better than driving out the Fultonville every time. So I'll have a, hopefully have an uh, update on that next month. We, we're do, we're currently doing testing on the sludge that is required before they'll accept it. So that takes about a week to get um, results. And C is just, I mentioned it up above the mercury min minimization plan. Um, I'll be sending out let a letter and some forms to the businesses around town uh, very shortly. Uh, let's see, water treatment plant. Um, I, as mentioned at the last town board meeting, Tim Nagel is retiring. And uh, thank you very much for the kind words uh, about Tim, Denise. He was very, he saw it and he was very happy. So thank you. Good, he's um, good. He was a great employee. He will be missed, definitely. Um, but we need to figure out a, a plan to replace him as, as, as a chief. And the, the, um, we ran into a, a couple of civil service issues. I don't know if we want to talk about that now or at the executive session. I don't know what's proper. Um, well, it's about specific people's employment, right? That's probably, yeah. yeah. Executive session. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll go to the next one then. Um, so since Tim's retiring, he's offered to come back and work uh, as needed uh, as an independent contractor for the town. It, it won't be like the other retirees that come back and work on weekends. He doesn't want to work on the weekends. He just wants to be available if we have questions. If, if we need him to come back in and, and using his his expertise and the knowledge of the plant to, to assist. So um, I don't see anything against anything negative in, in, in at least having that contract available so that we can use it as needed. Um, okay, so we need a resolution for that. Yes. Okay. And I, and Paul has a draft of it. Okay. Okay. Paul, you set. Yes, I, 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 I'll take care of that. We've okay, used great. this before at the water plant, a similar agreement. So we're just going to use a, basically the same agreement for Tim. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's why I raised it. So great. Thank you. W one more question. Sure. Can we use the same agreement, same draft template for somebody else too, if need be? Um, yes, it's, it's not. We haven't had many of these. We've had a, we've had some informal agreements in the past with some department heads that have left, but they never came back and did any work. <laughs> Can you? She knows. She hears me say that all the time. Yeah. Um, but we, we do obviously have another department head who we make. So, yeah. Right. Um, Paul and Elena, that's, that's what she's getting at. And so obviously we need to do that. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Did you get a rate? From him, is that? Um, no, I just wanted to bring this up. There's a possibility, sure. and then we will work on that. Well, we could do it now, or we can wait until there's a really big problem and we're not able to communicate with anybody and try then. I would prefer to do it at, uh, ahead of uh, his departure. So, all right, that's what, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll we'll yes, get a we for that. Get it signed. So we'll have a resolution for that also. You just need to get to give me the specifics. Got it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. I also have a um, one item too that, that just I just got the information this morning on. Um, Mike Borowski, who works at the water plant, um, just received his 2B um, water plant operator license. 
So he he's uh, now now qualified to operate the plant. Uh, he's been at, he's been a trainee for a while, um, but uh, we can discuss in in an executive session like we had mentioned for the other the other employee down there. Um, util utility billing. Uh, the second half. Yeah, I, I think we lost Denise. I don't know. I just saw a notice that she dropped off. Oh, I should be wearing my reading glasses. <laughs> yep. I'll text her. Oh, there you are. There I jumped. It kicked out. I don't know what happened. Okay. Spe yeah, because I was, you know, talking about the computer people. <laughs> then all <laughs> suddenly. Don't jinx it. Don't. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. I apologize for that, guys. Okay. We ready to go? I am. Okay. Uh, so uh, item A under utility billing, we had... Uh, all of our readings together, and we, we, we now have our, our second half of 2020 water bill that we have to pay to the city of Schenectady. We are going to be $22,343 short um, in, the, in the amount of money budgeted for that. Um, part, that's partly due to the fact that we have that contract glitch. Um, well, yeah, it, so more than that, actually. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, Paul? You know better than I do. I, I guess he. Oh, there he's back. Um, should he wait on paying that until after we meet? I would suggest that absolutely. We did purchase the water though, because we're operating at the higher. Um, we're, we're buying more water from the city to, so that we meet that contract because the way it's written right now. Okay, so this is the first. This is the first purchase, right? You haven't bought it for the rest of the year. This is for the second half of 2020. We haven't paid it yet. Okay, in that in that case, I if you have already bought it, we will have to purchase it. But I would say, let us go back and renegotiate it if we can somehow. What is the deadline for paying it? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. Kathy, there's, do you know? There's usually no deadline. They just want it paid within. You should know, isn't that they want it paid within 30 days, I think. I used to be the, on the other side. Now I'm on this side. So I right. want it delayed. You it can wait till next week, Matt. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, B, we still have the convenience fees that um, were absorbed by the town uh, for the last water billing uh, for credit card purchases on uh, through Invoice Cloud. Um, I don't have the exact figure in front of me right now, but uh, how do we want to pay those? Diane's office is paying it. I thought this isn't yours. You want to just we'll just or forward that along. Office. What did we we talked we talked about this like two months in a row. What did we decide? Alexis was was handling it. Yeah. Okay. She was going to renegotiate with them and talk about. Uh, Paul is back again some... because he heard he heard something. Um, we got it. We have to get it figured out. So I, I think that as to move forward, you know, the convenience fee, us absorbing it was a courtesy to our taxpayers at the request of the receiver of taxes. So the receiver of taxes, you know, she either this fee has to come out of her budget, but then moving forward, we have to get out of this situation. It's got to be a line on the bill, just like anything else. But I think we are. To, I'm not looking to charge yeah. our residents more money. That absolutely not. I I'm heartbroken over everything that had to happen this year as it relates to um, our taxpayer dollars. But we, if we're going to have this, we can, we can't absorb it unless we're going to plan for it, and it's a request that's put in so we can move forward next year's budget with it. 
with respect, um, this can cause a whole can of worms for my exactly, yard. Exactly, Michelle, because you don't do I that. I can't have that. Right. Uh, I, Michelle, I, I'm, I, Michelle, I'm with you on this one. So oh, Michelle yeah. takes all kinds of fees. We don't take her office. We can't do it in this office. I, I, I am certainly, certainly not going to inconvenience the residents, you know, any more than the, they have been through COVID. Um, and, and these are very lean budget years, but if it in one office and not in the other office, the, cl the clerks take all kinds of funds. So this has got to get resolved. We, we can't do it moving forward. We, we have to put a line on the budget and people know that. If I use my credit card to pay X, Y, or Z for my daughter, there's a fee on there if I'm doing it for a team's thing or that has to that has to end, in my opinion, because it's gonna. I'm the sorry. The clerk has spoken. The clerk has spoken. So, um, so two things have to happen. Is that you have to either take the money out of Diane's budget or get that, or uh, the supervisor mentioned doing it at her budget last month or two months ago. Get that figured out, and then moving forward, Matt. We have to figure out exactly what that convenience fee is, and that's got to be a line that's added to your budget that the people who print the bills. It's it's clearly on the online when when you go to pay. It's the and the way it's set up right now. We did change it back, so it, you do not. We do that. We should not absorb it next time the way it's currently Fine. set up. Okay, then we've talked. But it was done. It was done too late, so we the carryover um, is the issue and. Alexis was supposed to be last time we talked about it. Alexis was going to call them back, invoice cloud back, and she was. I thought that there was some negotiated reduced rate. Um, Laura's agreeing. I think she's recalling the same thing um, because we we paid it the first time at, at the full rate, and then the next cycle we were supposed to get a reduction. As that's that's what she was saying. That's my that's my understanding of what happened. Yeah. But if we, but I, I, I I haven't heard any more. I don't know, Paul. If you have a reason to speak to your assistant, no, I'll. I mean, I just don't know what you know what the rules are here. She is out. I don't want to be bothering her. No, this is something I need to handle independently. Okay, thank you, Paul. Paul, I'll send you uh, the gentleman's name is Greg Earl, um, who was handling our account. So I'll send you his contact information. Thank you, Supervisor. You're welcome. And Wait. I will find the money. We we, we will. So should I wait till you negotiate, Paul, before paying it? I mean, well, do we have an outstanding bill? Yes. Okay. Yeah, don't pay it. Yeah, I'm not going to wait. Yeah, we will pay it eventually. Later. I just, I think there's some confusion here as to what what it is. So I'll figure it out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item C uh, is just the, the, the third quarter corporate utility reconciliation. Uh, Chris has the numbers uh, ready to go. Kathy and I will we'll, we'll, we'll put a second set of eyes on them. Same thing with the fourth quarter corporate uh, utility warrant. We'll, we'll, we'll review that, make sure everything looks good, and we'll have it ready for the board meeting. Great. Thank you. Uh, Finance Committee. Uh, Basically, most of these are carried over from above, but I just leave it on there. The, the uh, Spectrum Franchise Agreement. Um, I don't know if there's any updates on that. I think we lost Paul. Um, no, but Paul isn't really involved in it. That's okay. Fine. So um, there's this. I, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on with my camera. Now I'm off again. I'm going black. Um, Paul. Nothing has moved forward on it. We have reached out to them. Nothing has moved forward on it. Okay. And then uh, B, C, and D, they just carried carried over from above. And uh, add a resolution for that, for uh, the ESG contract. Right. Um, other departments, recycling center, um, the old water and sewer garage. Um, mm -hmm. The site is just being left dormant for the winter. Once it's once we're through the winter, Ray will finish grading it out, and um, we'll we'll get uh, a gravel parking lot set up, and 
pick, uh, choose some areas where we want to um, plant some trees and grass as well. And Laura's happy. <laughs> um, the, um, the fuel system down there, um, that's going to be decommissioned in the next few weeks. Um, we moved our diesel tank out of there and the, and the gas tank. Josh, I don't know what's the uh, status on that. How, how many more weeks until they get that out of there? Um, so they'll be able to decommission the, uh, that tank once we have the other two tanks in service. So we're just pending. We have the, uh, the, uh, the uh, permits from DEC for those tanks, so they're ready to be filled. And I'm working with the uh, delivery company to set up accounts to get them filled. So once we have that, the tanks scheduled to be filled, we can schedule the startup with Northeast Petroleum on both those tanks and then put them in service. So that should be next week that we um, we have that startup. And then as soon as that's done, then we could decommission the old tanks. We won't be using it anymore. So all the construction's done. All the construction's done. Yep, we're just pending a startup right now. And I just need to get fuel in the tanks so we can do the startup. Great. Thank you. Um, item B, there, at the end of the year, we still have some outstanding bills that are coming in for the transfer station as far as hauling. Um, Kathy's waiting for them to send us final bills, but we will be over uh, the budgeted amount for hauling. And I think Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we were thinking that we could pull it from other areas in the, in the uh, transfer station and landfill lines that were left, that was left over. Can you hear me, Kathy? Thank you. Yes. We may have lost Kathy. Okay. Well, we will look to do that. Yeah, so we, we could just get that resolved. Yes. We, we don't have a, we're, we're still waiting for a final number. Once we have it, then we'll, we'll have that ready for the finance committee for, for a budget mod. Terrific. And then, um, it, it, the clerk's having a big meeting. Um, she also raised an issue me last week, Matt. So if you're done with that piece, I just had one more item to add under there. I would add D. Okay. Um, Michelle raised me last week doing, and we've talked about this from time to time, the one day permit for the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. We can do that. We can add that to the, uh, the, the credit card, um, app that we're using it wouldn't be that hard we could probably print up just a, a one day receipt basically and they pay for it we give it to them we tear it up and tear it up and, yeah right so yeah i'm thinking maybe not even give them anything just record it in the tablet so that That's i have fine. that i have so that i have record of it and then okay. you know they would still have to purchase the punch card yes okay so i think that would make it you know very convenient for people um i think that would it's so Matt, idea. when you look at um, what would cover your fee, you know, what would cover the charge of it or uh, talk to Michelle. So whether it's 20 or $25 for a one day fee, you know, most of those people, you know, I've been in that boat, right? My mom died. I had to clean out her house, you know, so, you know, you don't know really what else to do. So it, it's a bargain. Um, a one day permit is a bargain regardless of what the price is, frankly. Yeah. I mean, you're paying. I think the people really dollars. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, and we, if we're still charging them with the punch cards too, it's not as if we're losing money on it. So. Okay. Great. We Michelle, can do that. Excellent point. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just when you were talking about updating the code. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are some um, issues with the code referring to the transfer station. Um, it still says that the clerk actually has to go out and put the sticker on the vehicle that's being used. Yeah. You don't want to do that, um, Michelle? Michelle, you don't I don't know. know. It's just kind of. It's only Tuesday and Saturday. Friday sometimes. Yeah. And then also the three-day pass, it says it has to be used three consecutive days. So at this point, we're making it as convenient as possible. The guys, you know, whoever has a three day pass, they just punch it and every, or they do some kind of mark on it so that they know, okay, this person's done when they yeah. come back. Um, 
you know, the three consecutive days, I remember having, you know, when this committee used to meet at, you know, three or four hour clips, um, that was a very long discussion a number of times. And Rich Pollack and Paul Sebesta have very strong feelings about the three consecutive days. So I acquiesced on that. I will leave it to um, the superintendent of water and sewer and engineering to figure out what is best for his department as it relates to the three consecutive days. I, I think what what was talked about though that does make sense. The three having three days back to back to back. Uh, I'd rather have it three days, three three separate, uh, and especially then if you offer the the one day too, that gives you more flexibility as well. Sure, I so agree. We can talk. We can discuss it. And um, do you want to? Can we can we move on this before the next meeting, or do we need to? Um, does that require board action? To set the fee, we'll need a yeah. resolution yeah. to set the fee. Right. Okay. So can you get that figured and out? And also change the code. Here? Yes. Yep. Okay. And and, and also then should change the code. The code issues. So a okay. um, code update is going to take a little bit longer though, because we have to call for a public hearing when we update the code. Yeah. Exactly. But if so I can, can I can do a resolution to set the fees um, and do that. And then we can, I'll try to get everything done so that we can call for a public hearing, specifically on the transfer station, if that's what you want to do. I would like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That would be great, Elena. Thank you very much. I know those are a lot of extra work for you, but if we can get these things cleaned up, going back to Laura, you know, the, and she knows, you know, we all know what we're we're doing here. I Thank you. One. Matt, you seem like there's now a lot of code things for you. You might want to just look through the whole thing and see if you've got other things. Oh, there there are a lot of references um, to titles that no longer exist, boards that don't that no, no longer exist. Um, I have a, I have a list. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Metals that no longer exist. Hmm, I'm intrigued. Okay, does anybody have anything else? Uh, one one thing that you know, just a note: the uh, transfer station will will be closed Tuesday from ten to twelve. Uh, the guys are going to post it. Um, that's when the two operators or the two attendants down there have their um, first vaccine shot oh, um, great. scheduled. So they're going to run down and do that, and then come back. So the it. it that's worst case. I mean, their appointments, I think, at a little bit after ten o'clock. So, um, I want it. it I from uh, when I'm, I'm hearing it's less than an hour. So, I think that most people can get in and get get back. So, um, they pr may even be open earlier than that. But we're going to say 10, 10 to twelve, just so that nobody's waiting at the gate. Yeah, that's great. If we we'll, we'll post it on the web page. Oh, good. Thank and you. then if you want to draft up something or I'll draft up something and get it to Seth to get an email out. And town. That can be done. Um, but that's great. I mean, they work very closely with a population. Uh, yeah, they're, they're probably one of the, yeah, they're probably one of the, the most exposed because they're coming in. They see more people per hour than a lot of us. And they also, the people that they're seeing are, the highest vulnerable population. So absolutely, absolutely, that is the epitome of a forward-facing position in our community. So, all right, do you have anything else? That I have uh, just a uh, request for an executive session. Yes, we're gonna. Uh, we'll make. I make a motion to move into an executive session. The executive session is being held pursuant to Section One Hundred Five F of the Open Meetings Law to discuss the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or a corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person. So I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Right. So uh, I would ask, Seth, Seth, the people we need to keep on are um, the supervisor. We are, we are going... We're going to adjourn. We're, when we come out of executive session, we are going to adjourn immediately. There'll be no further business. So okay, yeah. so I, I can I can stop recording and yes. live streaming. Exactly. Okay. And then Seth, we rely on you to tell us when 